All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm just gonna try some stuff with the footage from a GoPro Hero 9 Black at 5K with Edius 10. Now, this video is kind of more designed for Edius 10 users, to be honest. So something for my brothers and sisters in Edius land out there who are on 10. However, if you're on a lower version of Edius, or if indeed you may be on a different NLE, maybe something like this might be of interest to you. And if so, there's going to be links in the description for this video taking you to where you can download a trial of Edius 10. Okay, so the first thing to do here is I'm just gonna go into project settings just so we can see exactly what's going on as far as the project setup is concerned. So straight off bat, what we're seeing here is 5120 by 2880, which is one flavor of 5K. And then as we come down here, I'm also in 10 bit as well. 10 bit is not entirely necessary for this particular footage, although I would normally have a 10 bit timeline just in case I had other assets which would require 10 bit and maybe 422 chroma subsampling. Then moving further down, we're in 709, and that's because even though we're at 5K and such with the GoPro, it still only uses 709 as well. Everything else in here, you can have a quick look at if you need to, but the basics of this project are that it's 5K 10 bit. Okay, so I'm gonna okay that. Let me come out of here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna drag one of the clips to the timeline. Now let's quickly have a look at this clip and what it consists of. Now, as you can see here, this is GoPro H.265. It's 29.97 frames per second. And it is also 5120 by 2880, which once again is a particular flavor of 5K, which matches the project. Now, if I have a look at the extended satins here, as we can see, 8-bit, 420 chroma subsampling. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is just straight off bat, I'm just gonna hit play. And at the moment, I am actually in full here. So I'm in a full 10-bit timeline. Let's just see what happens. This front screen, it's not really that useful for anything other than, and I, and I say it loosely though, framing. Uh, okay, so as you could see there, that was playing perfectly in real time. Now, you might have noticed a couple of little like skips at the beginning there. That's normal. It is just the buffer filling up, and that's because I didn't give it any kind of like pre space to buffer into before the media starts. But for the best, you know, for all intents and purposes, that is perfectly real time. Now, I'm going to play again, but look down here when I play this time, and you will see the buffer fills up and maintains a full buffer. Um, because it's got so many problems with its frame rate or you know its refresh rate um, and the other thing as well you can't really gauge exposure from it really but okay so as we can see there it very quickly fills the buffer and the buffer remains there which is really great now what i'm going to do i'm just going to kind of chop this up a little bit so let me just do some quick random chops in the timeline here or cuts <laughs> Right, hold on. I think that's probably going to be enough there. In fact, there's one thing that I'm doing here, and that is I'm going to be editing with the same source clip. I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not this puts uh, like different types of strain on a system. This is any Anali I'm thinking about here now, as to whether or not if you're manipulating the same source file but doing multiple things to the same thing. I'm just wondering, I've never really worked this one out, as to whether or not that actually is more strenuous for a system. Uh, nonetheless, if it is, it will also give us another indication of maybe something else, which could be a positive thing here. So, for all intents and purposes, I've just I've just made an edit. <laughs> Not a very good edit, I'll give it that, but it is an edit nonetheless. Now, let's see what happens once we start hitting those edit points and keep an eye on the buffer down here as well. Not even in my own personal tests, and I don't think I'll even do it. I'll mention it. I'll mention that I don't like it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to start slagging off the front screen so the square is. Or the box. Uh, the box, as Robert says, <laughs> you can't see where the... Okay, so as we could see there, that was fine. Now, just quickly, once again, I'm just going to reiterate a point there. I actually think it is harder on an edit system, no matter what it is, if it is actually manipulating sections of the same source media clip. So if that is the case, and I am right in that, we've actually just pushed it maybe a little bit further as well. So it, it's maintained all that there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do 
I'm going to take, let's see, each odd clip here and I'm going to apply some manipulation to the pixels. And to do that for the first go, I'm going to just use Layouter and I'm just gonna do some resizing here. This is just gonna be very random. Again, all this stuff is random. Whilst I am emulating an edit, it's just not a particularly good edit, I don't think. <laughs> so let me just do the, each alternating clip here. And don't forget, Edius is still working within 10 bit processing here. Like I say, not entirely necessary whatsoever, really, for 8 bit sources. But I've put it here anyway because, like I said earlier, I would be dealing with other other timeline assets which would require that bit depth and what have you. And plus also, we are seeing Edius working flat out, as it were. So let me try this again. Not even in my own personal tests, and I don't think I'll even do it. I'll mention it. I'll mention that I don't like it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to start slagging off the front screen so the square is. Or the box, uh, the box as Robert says, <laughs> you can't see where the box is going. So yeah, I even rep Okay, so as we could see there, once again, the buffer maintained like it was full all the way through. Okay, so that definitely works. So, so far, what we've seen here is that Edius is more than capable of doing a cuts only exercise at, at, at full settings with 5K and with a very difficult source codec not just not it's not just that h.265 is a difficult codec which it is to start off with it's also the fact that gopro's flavor of it does seem to be a little problematic with a whole bunch of nles but right now what we're seeing is that edius is swimming through this really well now just one quick thing to mention here i'm actually on an intel i99900k so there is a minimum that you have to use as far as the processor is concerned with Edius to do this. And the reason why that is, is because Edius is using the quick sync processor with inside the CPU in order to do the decoding for H.265. Now I couldn't tell you right now what the minimum one is, but it, like I say, wherever I point to for the trial download, there should be information there to let you know what would be the minimum CPU requirements or more importantly, the quick sync variation which would be needed in order to do what I'm doing right now. But nonetheless, this is a 9900K that's doing this. So this will give you a gauge from that point as to you know what you could be or should be expecting with various other CPUs. Now what I'm gonna do, is try some stuff which is going to tip it over the edge and should stop us from like you know keeping or maintaining a real-time timeline and i think the easiest way to do this would be to apply let me see uh, the primary color corrector okay so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to go a bit wild with some settings now, this definitely is not me trying to affect the grade or anything because, one, I'm not a colorist or a grader. And in fact, there aren't many people that are, to be honest, because, you know, a lot of people talk about these things, you know, grading and coloring and especially technical grading as well. It is, a, it is an art as much as what, like, you know, somebody who is an editor is like, you know, an artist and an editor and a technical editor and stuff like that. Same thing for grading. You know, that's the reason why I would never say I'm a grader. And I think this picture here will prove that point. <laughs> anyway, regardless of how that picture looks, I have definitely done something to it with the color correction or with the primary color corrector. Now let's see what happens. It in uh, the videos that I do, and I'll probably mention it once. Okay, so now we've hit the point where we cannot maintain a real-time timeline. So. When I, when I, I'll just start again randomly somewhere in this into this clip and if you keep an eye down here you will see the buffer is trying to fill but my system just isn't strong enough or powerful enough in order for that to happen so watch this properly bought this you know for the front screen and they are definitely going to use a the front screen then yeah okay so as you could see there it was just struggling all the way however Let's see what happens or how low we have to go in order to get a real-time timeline back. So what I'm going to do here is drop to 8-bit. Now let's see what happens. Maybe to do some tests that other people wanted to see. Yeah, so as far as the, the front screen is concerned here, 
it's not for me anyway although i think if okay now that maintained a full buffer all the way through and was basically real time all the way through which is really good now the one thing to remember here is dropping from 10 bit to 8 bit for this particular source footage here will give us visually no difference whatsoever so although we've had to go to a lower playback timeline resolution as in from 10 to 8 bit what it's done for us is give us a real time timeline but at the same time it doesn't affect the resolution or anything because the material that we're working with is only 8 bit at this point anyway and plus on top of that unless you're playing out to an external monitor if once you're in like say the, the the user interface like i am right now and looking at the playback area here that is again only say roughly a quarter of the size of this screen now i'm in 4k on my monitors and stuff and i could actually drop lower than that and i will do shortly just to prove a point for something else during this kind of edit exercise and from my perspective the resolution of the playback doesn't change anyway again because we're working with such high resolutions but what we're looking back at it on can't really support that resolution or, or it doesn't make sense at that resolution to see it in a smaller box as it were okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to try a title now here's a title now just like my color correction it doesn't make much sense what it is i just literally banged out a load of random keys as you can see here so let's see what happens here when i apply this to the start of my awesome edit so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go back to full 10 bit here for this section just to see if there's any way this will maintain real-time playback not even in my own personal tests and I don't think I'll even do it, I'll mention it. Okay, so obviously not, no. But that's not a surprise. I just didn't think it would do that anyway. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop this back to 8-bit. Let's see what happens. Not even in my own personal tests. And I don't think I'll even do it, I'll mention it. I'll mention that I don't like it. I don't know, I mean... I okay, now that's definitely working there. Now let me get up to the graded element with the with the title overlay let's see what happens here as 8-bit now this may fall down a bit here let's see it in uh, the videos that i do and i'll probably mention it once because the, th the simple fact okay that's interesting right so i have to be honest i was expecting that to fall over then and weirdly well it's really good though it didn't so what we've got there is the is the gopro clip being graded and also having a title overlay thrown over it let me just try something else here now don't forget we're working with an interframe codec here so we're not going to have the best response in the timeline which i will show down here first before anything's done to the clip actually do you know what it doesn't act, it doesn't scrub that bad to be honest let me just try this okay right considering that's like a very difficult interframe codec that i'm dealing with there that's that's actually working again a lot better than what i was expecting to be honest right there's been two things quickly here that I, 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 i've been quite surprised by because i was expecting certain things not to perform as good as they had done so i'm actually seeing two of these things for the first time to be honest because also I'd, although i'd already done that title before i'd not tested it with the graded section now if i go here and then try scrubbing yeah this is where we're going to see this difficulty now what it is we've got a ton of stuff going on here so scrubbing through like this isn't really going to be a, a thing to do um how this works on other nles i couldn't tell you but other people on other nles will obviously know they can they will know by what i'm doing here as to how this compares to what they would normally see let me just try nudging <laughs> yeah nudging has slowed right down yeah see that that was about five frames behind from what i was doing right yeah what i'm going to do i'm not going to get stuck on this but i just need to show people stuff that isn't particularly good just so we do have a gauge of where we can push and pull stuff here i'm just going to start nudging through the timeline you'll hear me stop clicking and then you can see what the screen's doing <laughs> okay there you go not good now what i'm going to do let me just try something i'm going to go straight down to a 16th now the screen should go quite nasty 
But let me just try that nudge thing again. Okay, so that stayed the same regardless of the forced resolution for playback. Now let me just try a couple of other things here. I'm gonna put this back up to 8-bit again. Now what I'm gonna try doing here Sorry, quick jump cut. I just had to answer the front door. There was no getting around it. I'm sorry about that. What I was about to do there was to go into just putting a picture in picture over the top of all this editing that I've just done. And I am using the word editing very loosely. Okay, so let me just grab some clip from the timeline here. Let me drop that in there. In fact, let me just get rid of the audio off it. Right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to use Layouter to do the picture in picture. Um, there are, of course, other ways of doing this. You could use transform, there's dedicated filters and such. And also as well, you know, on other NLE systems, there's probably a number of ways of doing something like this. But nonetheless, what I'm doing here is like really pushing the system now. So what I'm gonna do is put this back to full and I will just play through this. This is gonna fail immediately, but all I'm gonna do is just come down to the playback resolutions just to see where to get up to and when, where, at what point can I maintain real-time playback. Not even a million pairs. Okay, so full definitely doesn't work, although we weren't expecting anything different than that. Now, I think 8-bit probably won't work either at this point. We'll test and I don't think I'll... Yeah, it definitely doesn't work. Now, if I come to a half, we may may possibly get away with this. Let's have a look. Not even in my own personal tests. And Actually, yes, we are. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to try that again. I'm just going to skip to another cut point here. Now, just bear in mind, you can hear this as I'm tapping the keyboard. It won't play immediately from me hitting the key because at this point, we still have to get a certain amount of pre-buffer built up before it's able to start playing the timeline. So as you can hear on the keys here, I'm just gonna skip through these edit points, then I'm just gonna drop on one randomly and then hit play, play. There we go, so that is quite some time there to be honest. But, you know, what I'm going to do in a second is drop that resolution down again just to see if that'll change things. But for now, we are getting real-time playback here on the timeline for all that's going on there. In fact, let me just try nudging here. Yeah, the nudge function is slowed right down as well. Of course, the reason why this is happening is because we're having to process far too much in order to hit our first full, like, buffered frame, which is the very least any NLE would need, let alone Edius, in order to give us at least frame nudging as well. Now, just while I'm here, we know that half works. Let me just go to a 16th. Now, that 16th will definitely work for playback, but will it work for nudging and stuff? So, what I'm gonna do here is just click through randomly uh, to the edit points, then I'll hit play. You'll hear the play like being hit as I do this. And let's get a gauge to see how it starts. Although I suspect it still might not be too good because of all the heavy stuff that's got to happen to get the first few frames into buffer. Oh, that's, sorry, that's nudging again <laughs> right there. So the square is. Or the box. Yeah, there we go. We can see that the resolution's dropped right down, but right now, dropping resolution is not going to assist us in speeding up anything to do with manipulation within the timeline as far as the transport functionality is concerned. That would be scrubbing, nudging and such, and also then just using like your AS buttons and stuff just to skip to edit points. Okay, so that'll give us an idea of what that's going to do there. Now what I'm gonna do, let me get to this section here where we had this bit of a grade going on, or one of Dave's grades. I'm gonna try that out a half, let's see what happens. It in uh, the videos that I do, and I'll probably mention it once, because the, th the simple fact is it Now, that's very weird, that's working, that's very, that, to be honest, right, a couple of things have surprised me here, because I haven't actually done all of this before, so some of this is new to me, as in the first time I've tried it. And I'm very surprised that that's happening there at half res. And once again, don't you know? Don't forget, when you're in half res or even say down to maybe a quarter, because we're working at such high resolutions, and our playback area on the screen is only a quarter of a 4K monitor, which in turn is only 1080 thereabouts. 
we're still not actually dropping below the optical resolution for the section of the monitor on the UI that we're looking at. So this is actually quite neat really, because we can still maintain a very good looking picture. Now, you know, don't forget if this were playing out full screen on 4K or say higher, and especially on an external monitor, we would immediately start seeing that lowering of resolution for getting our timeline to play back, you know, quicker and faster in real time and stuff like that. But on the UI here, it's actually really cool. Okay, I'm just wondering if there's anything else really that I could discuss here because I, I appreciate that this has probably dragged on and gone on long, but. I'm just trying to show people that there is some pretty cool stuff going on here with Edius 10. Right, do you know what? I'll leave it at that here now, because what it is, there is another video that I've got to do really quickly, and that is editing in 8K60. And yes, 8K60, I've actually been doing some stuff at that resolution and frame rate. And that's 60 as well, not 59.94. And what that's been for is for some game capture stuff. And regardless of whether it's game capture or proper real video, doesn't matter. The actual strain on the system is identical. So the next video that I'll do will probably be that one. So if you've been interested in this one, then yeah, keep an eye on me channel because this next thing will freak it out completely. Also, I'm going to be doing some NVENC encode testing as well, which is another thing that's freaked me out. In fact, there's a whole, been a whole bunch of things that's been freaking me out with Eddie's 10. It's been awesome. Anyways, and from the outset, as I'd said, you know, this is realistically for Eddie's 10 users just to get a bit of an idea of what they may be able to do. But also, you know, anybody who's on Edius on previous versions, hopefully this has given them, you know, something to look at and maybe could could well help them to make a decision to upgrade, you know, based on the types of footage that they may or may not be using and stuff. And also on top of that as well, hopefully other people who are on other NLEs who've maybe got an interest in such resolutions and such workflows, possibly even using some heavy kind of GoPro workflows. You may be interested in this, but nonetheless, like I said from the outset, there will be links in the description below where you can go and download a trial version of Edius 10. I'll also try and find a link where maybe there's some kind of more information about system requirements and such. And defo keep an eye on my channel. So lastly, to all my Edius brothers and sisters out there, stay strong and keep the faith. And to everybody in the world, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.